Hello everyone and welcome back to Clear Creek Solutions Hydrology Education videos. In this video, we're going to be doing an overview of green cities and LID. We're going more in depth on green cities. We've done previous videos on LID, what different kind of LID elements there are, what kind of green infrastructure elements there are. We thought we'd add a little more depth on what green cities actually are and how they're being implemented across the globe. So that's what we're going to get into here. So green cities or eco cities are urban areas that encourage sustainable developments of the natural world and overall well-being of the city's inhabitants. So there's more of an emphasis not just on the economic layout of the city, but how it can benefit the natural world, be sustainable, and help the inhabitants there as well. So what are some of the characteristics of green cities? In order to be considered a green city, the urban area must be dedicated to preserving the following characteristics. You must have green buildings, some form of a water conservation project or uh, infrastructure, public green spaces, and some form of waste management that uh, is sustainable or considered to be uh, of the sustainable variety. So what are green buildings? We've gone over LID before. You can find those videos on our channel, but essentially green infrastructure, our green buildings can come in a variety of forms. This can include green roofs, bioretention facilities, permeable pavement, rain gardens, roadside filter strips, and many other kinds of green infrastructure. And how is it implemented? Instead of routing stormwater runoff to chambers, detention facilities, or tanks, Stormwater is routed to LID and green infrastructure for future filtration and storage. So let's talk about water conservation. What are some of the methods? Well, water conservation methods intend to preserve as much fresh water as possible through the entire hydrologic cycle in an urban environment. So instead of allowing stormwater to get polluted, head downstream, go to a water body, through every part of the process, water is being conserved and being filtrated and treated so that it can be re-implemented into the natural environment. Natural stormwater capturing methods, as well as LID facilities, allow for the capture and treatment of water directly from the source. Reduction in erosion is very important as it relates to water quality and downstream facilities and waterways. So not only are we trying to reduce pollution of the water, but reduce erosion due to impervious facilities um, so that we can allow the streams that are downstream not get crowded with too much erosion or sediment. And what are public green spaces? So in a heavily urban environment, such as a large city or suburban sprawl, it is important to leave natural green spaces for citizens to enjoy and utilize. Green spaces may also have aesthetic benefits. So green infrastructure can be implemented in an urban environment via jurisdictional requirements. While there may be no design benefit to adding green infrastructure, the aesthetic and social benefits are immense. So not everything in a green city is going to be about the direct, applicable economic benefits but also the social benefits. So people have a place to gather in large urban environments, large urban cities or metropolises. People have somewhere to gather where, there's, where it's sustainable, where there's nature present, and it can be good for the inhabitants there. May even draw tourists as well. So it may have that benefit. Now let's talk about waste management. Due to the large amounts of waste created in urban environments, methods must be created to dispose of waste in an ethical way while taking advantage of the aspects of the waste that could be utilized. So waste can often be reused as energy, recycled, as in the case of plastics, or replaced into waste sorting systems to properly utilize each piece of trash and waste. So there's many garbage cans now in cities where every part of the waste can be placed in a different bin. This allows it to be reused properly. What needs to be discarded is discarded, but what can be reused or recycled, such as plastics, can then be placed in the proper system and reused down the line. So here's the top 10 green cities in the world. This is what many experts consider be, to be the top 10. We have Singapore, which is located in the nation of Singapore, San Diego, USA, Copenhagen, Denmark, Oslo, Norway, Zurich, Switzerland, Karutaba, Brazil, Portland, USA, Reykjavik, Iceland, Tokyo, Japan, and Lati, Finland. We're going to go over a couple um, of these green cities here across the world. Singapore has the lowest air and water pollution rates. There are strictly energy or there are strict energy efficient standards for vehicles and buildings and hundreds of miles of walking and bike trails in Singapore itself. And then Seattle. Seattle is ranked number one among cities with sustainable business practices. Hydropower is used for most of the city's energy, thanks to the many lakes and rivers in Washington state. And it's heavily focused on waste management and sustainable inner city transportation. Then there is Stockholm, which is in Europe. Citizens are heavily involved in sustainability initiatives. People often take part in recycling initiatives, extending trails and bike paths and improving transportation. So there's a lot of citizen involvement in European cities, specifically in Stockholm, and then Reykjavik, Iceland. Reykjavik gets most of its energy from solar power and sunlight. The city has one of the best air quality ratings in the entire world, 
and it's very eco-friendly for tourists in general. So $7.6 trillion is what private banking firms encourage investments in green cities over the next decade with a $1 trillion emphasis just on water alone. So a lot of private banking firms and organizations worldwide are investing in green cities to improve the infrastructure there. You can see it's a quite a bit of money that is going to that in the future. So what are some of the drawbacks though of green cities? So while green cities have many benefits, there are many challenges ahead. One is the cost. You can see 7.6 trillion is a lot of money. And so there's a lot of money that needs to go towards green infrastructure and that's being money that is pulled from other areas. So the cost is going to be a big one. Public approval as well. People aren't always on board with certain green infrastructure movements. Um, it's going to require a lot of change. So working in tandem with the public and different cultures is going to be a very uh, big part of that in terms of moving towards green cities. And then thirdly, it's going to be the time. It takes a long time to implement infrastructure, come up with new methods, test them. Um, it just doesn't come out of thin air. So it's going to take a lot of time for these urban areas to adjust to this. And then unity, having people agree on which methods to be utilized, where they should be, what is applicable for the culture at hand. Um, it's not always clear sometimes and getting people to agree on what methods should be pursued is always going to be a large part of the entire movement. Green cities provide a wide range of benefits but are far from becoming the norm in rural communities due to the cost and difficulty of implementation. So that is a presentation on green cities. If you want to uh, explore the resources here, they're referenced on the screen if you want to learn more. We have videos on LID and green infrastructure specifically if you want to learn more about that, but that's an overview of green cities. We hope that was helpful. If you have a question, leave it in a comment down below and like and subscribe to the channel so you can keep watching videos like this. Thank you so much for watching and anyways, we'll see you guys next time.